Today's lesson is chapter 7, lesson 2, and it's section 7.4. And we're solving systems of linear equations using substitution. Last day, our first lesson, we did solving systems of linear equations, which systems means more than one line. Linear equations means we're using straight lines. And solving them is finding where they cross each other. Or it's the x and y are the variables that make both equations equal when you substitute their values in. Today, we're using substitution. So to solve by substitution, you must substitute one value in for another. So substitute, if you have a substitute teacher in, I'm gone that day, and the substitute comes in in my place. So I'm being replaced by something. Say you go to McDonald's, you use substitute fries for side salad, Your, the fries are going out, side salad's coming in. So substitute just means something is taking another one's place. And what I'm going to do today is I'm going to skip the learning intention, because the only learning intention today is solving by substitution. So, to solve by substitution, here's the steps. First, you need to isolate any variable. It can be the x, it can be the y, and it can be from either equation. And I'm going to give you some hints later on which ones to choose. And sometimes this step is done for you. So if it's already done for you, skip step one. Number two, here's where we substitute. Substitute the isolated variable from step one. So whatever letter you got alone in step one, you're going to substitute it into the other equation. So I've capitalized other because it's important it goes into the other one. Step three, solve. Get the variable alone. So after you substitute, what's going to happen is you're going to have an equation with only one variable. And that's the whole goal. You can't solve when there's two variables. So you manipulate it into a one variable equation, and that's when you're going to solve. Just get that letter alone. And that's going to be half your answer. Then finally, Whatever your answer is in step three, you're going to substitute the value from step three back into the isolated equation in step one. It can actually be any equation in step one, but the isolated one will save you a step. So these are the steps, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to now go through some examples, and we'll work through the examples using these steps. Here's our first example. What we're going to do is we're going to solve by substitution these two equations. Really quickly, I'm going to put this up and then erase it is before substitution, if I had asked you to solve this by graphing, I would have put each of these into their y equals form, and then I would have graphed them. And when I graph them, this line here would look roughly like this. This line here would look roughly like this. And our answer would be where they meet. And the coordinate would be the coordinate 6, 7. Because x is 6, y is 7. And you can see, you could check this one, at least on the left one, really quick. If x is 6, y is 7, 6 equals 7 minus 1, 6 equals 6, yes, it checks. And just trust me, it works on this one. So that is how you would have done this solving by graphing. Today we are going to solve by substitution. So let's solve by substitution. Step 1. Step 1 said to isolate any variable. Now I have four variables here. I have an x. I have a y, I have a 3x, and I have a y. So in this case, though, this x is already isolated. That x is by itself. There's nothing else on that side of the equal sign. So step one is actually done for me. And we've, so I'm going to call that step one. We've isolated the variable. So this part of the equation. Now I'm going to use an example here. A nickel is the same as a five cent coin. Okay, they have the same value. They're the same thing, just different names. In this case, same. These both hold the same value x is y minus 1 in this case. So nickel, 5 cents, same thing. They just look different, or they have different names. So now that we've isolated, step 2 said to substitute the value of your variable, so this is the value of x, into the other equation. So again, this is a fancy way of saying x right now. So it is going to take place of x. That is the substitute piece. So if this takes place of the x, I have three of these. And notice everything else stays the same. 11 equals y minus 3, 3. The only thing I changed is my x turned into y minus 1. So that is step two. That is, I have substituted the value into x. Now, what I need to do is solve. So work through bed mass, because I only have one variable here. It's y's. So let's get all these y's together. So um, 3 times my brackets, I get 3 times y is 3y. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. 
Now, collector-like terms. I have three y's, and I need to take away a y. So I have two y's in total. Now I want to get my y's alone, so I'm going to add three to both sides. And again, a lot of you are doing this math in your head now, so that, that's absolutely okay. I still want to get my y alone. I need to divide it by two, and I get y equals seven. A key to this is a, that's only half the answer. Remember back to what we're looking for. We're looking for an x and a y that makes this a true statement. Well, I've only got the y. So step three, though, is done. I have gone through and I have solved my first letter. Step four, this value goes back into the original isolated term. So I have x equals y minus 1. So x equals y turned into a 7. Sorry, that's a little jammed in there. So the y turned into a 7. So the y turned into a 7. 7 minus 1 is 6. So I have my x coordinate, my y coordinate. My answer is 6, 7. And again, you can test this. If x is 6, y is 7, 6 equals 7 minus 1, yes, 6 equals 6. And then try up here. What happens if I put a 6 in here? Well, 3 times 6 is 18. 18 minus 7 is 11. 11 equals 11. Good. I did a, a little mental check there without having to write up my check. So what we'll do is we'll see one other example where the first step isn't isolated for us, and then we'll go on to the assignment. So here's our next example, solved by substitution. And in this case, again, I have two equations, but I don't have any letter isolated yet. Now, if I want to isolate, I have a 4x, 1y, 2x's, and 3y's. The thing about substitution is you always want to work with a variable with a coefficient of 1. And a coefficient is just the number in front of a variable. So this coefficient is 4, coefficient is 1, coefficient is 2, coefficient is 3. And really quickly, the reason why is let's say I tried to isolate one of these ones, and I want to get the y alone. Well, I would get, really quickly, not showing my work here, I have isolated the y. The problem here is this. We've made it more difficult than it needs to be, because if y equals this equation, when I put these fractions into here, I'm going to be working with more fractions. And a lot of us aren't loving fractions, so we can make this quicker and easier on ourselves if... I choose the variable that has a 1 in front of it. And this y has a 1 in front of it, so I'm going to get that y alone. I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides, and I get y equals negative 4x minus 5. There is step 1 done. I have isolated a variable. Step 2 says take the value and put it into the other equation. And it's going y equals this. So this is y. It's going into the y. Okay, so what's going into the y? y equals negative 4x minus 5. So negative 4x minus 5 takes the place of the y. So that is step 2 done. I've substituted. It's solving by substitution. There's your hint to these questions if it ever asks it directly like that. Now, I have some brackets here, so I need to expand and multiply this out. So, 3 times negative 4 is minus 12x. 3 times minus 5, or negative 5, is minus 15. Now, collect your x's, collect your numbers. 2x minus 12x is, I have minus 10x's. And again, if you're doing this all in one step, that's okay. I need to... Add 15 to both sides, so negative 10x equals 20. Still working to get that x alone. Divide both sides by negative 10, and x equals negative 2. Half my answer. So that is step 3 done. Step 3 was solve that variable to get it by itself. Now, step 4, whatever value you get goes back into the original isolated question. This is x is negative 2, so the x becomes negative 2. So negative 4, x changed into negative 2. 
Negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. 8 minus 5 is 3. So my answer is the coordinate negative 2, 3 is where these are meeting. I don't, I'm not sure exactly how the lines look, but something in that realm of thought where there's two lines crossing at the point negative 2, negative 3. If I put x is negative 2 and y is 3 into my original questions, it would check. Negative 2 here being negative 8, plus 3 is negative 5, good. Put negative 2 up here, negative 4 plus 9 is 5, 5 equals 5, good, it checks. So your assignment for this, um, I'm just going to go really short on you here. I'll go page 425, questions, um, oh, I had this in my head earlier, uh, 4 and 5, and you're doing just A and C. So you're only going to do four of these. It's actually a really short little assignment. If you're not getting it, you need more practice, do more. These are just suggested assignments. Um, in the past, I've been giving larger ones because I think you need to do more practice to understand it or to really get it uh, set in your head, but also to see a realm of different varieties. They'll throw little curveballs in every now and then. This is what it'll take at a minimum for, I think, to understand it. Please do more if you're not totally getting it or you're not quick at it yet. Okay, good luck. Stay classy, Matt class.